coordinates, you know, you're used to seeing things like y equals mx plus b, and you immediately know that's a line of slope m and the intercept is b. Or you say, uh, you know, ax squared plus bx plus c, that's going to be a parabola. You know what these functions look like. There are functions like that in polar coordinates as well that are really useful to know because they're going to show up a lot. One of those classes of functions are called limassons. Um, limassons are of the form r equals a plus b sine theta and r equals a plus b cos theta. Okay? Now, Limassons, uh, there are really four different kinds, okay? And it all depends on the ratio between A and B. So uh, we're gonna draw four graphs here. One, two, three, four. Um, so the first kind you can get is you can get something that has an inner loop like this. Okay, so here I get this we kind of weird inner loop. This isn't something we usually see in Cartesian coordinates, right? So you get an inner loop uh, when the absolute value of a over b is less than one. Okay, so we ignore the sign here, and all we do is a divided by b. If that's less than one, you're going to have an inner loop. Okay, what if you get a over b? equal to one. Well, if that happens, uh, you get something called a cardioid, where you have the, uh, a point at the pole right here, and it creates this kind of shape. Okay, I, I drew that kind of poorly, but it, it's supposed to look kind of like a heart-ish, but without a point down here. So uh, this is called a cardioid, and cardioids are good to know, and the special thing about cardioids is that their point is right at the pole, okay? And they're curved here, and they have this strong dimple. But you can also get um, shapes that have dimples that do not touch the pole. Um, and that, we just say, okay, you get something that is dimpled. Um, and you get something that is dimpled if you have a range of your one is less than a over b, and that's less than two. And if that happens, you're going to get something that looks like this. Okay, so you still have this, this dimple here, okay, but it's no longer touching the pole, and it's not as severe as it was in the cardioid, okay? This really is kind of a range, and you're going to see this, where uh, the moment your inner loop goes away and becomes a point, you have a cardioid, and that point is at the pole. And then your cardioid starts to decrease its, its severity, its depth, until eventually you end up with something that has no dimple and no inner loop, okay? But it's not a circle, okay? You get this if A over B is greater than or equal to two, where you get something that, and this is, I'm gonna really struggle to draw it, but you get something that's like a circle for the most part, but then over here, it's just kind of flat, okay? So this is not me drawing poorly. It's actually flat here, and then it goes around. Not not like a line, but it flattens out and then it goes down like this, okay? So um, this is where you have the dimple, like it's still preparing to make a dimple, but no dimple forms, okay? So it doesn't actually go backward at all on this graph. It just goes and then doesn't go backward, keeps going down and then loops back around. Okay, so there's, there's no dimple here. So you can see this is kind of a range where we go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, okay? Uh, and the way you determine um, whether these limassons are like this um, or are instead, you know, I could have something like um, this, right? I could have it vertical instead of horizontal or I could have it uh, instead like, this, right? So how do we control what direction it's pointing in, okay? Well, the way you do that is if you have a sine, it's gonna be vertical. So these are all, all of these graphs are cosine graphs. Um, so cosine graphs means you're gonna have things that are horizontal, okay? When I, when I say that, I mean that um, if you were to connect, like you were to draw a line through the dimple, it's gonna be uh, the polar axis. 
Um, whereas sine, if uh, I draw a line through the dimple, uh, wherever that is, or through the inner loop to bisect that, then that's gonna be the theta equals pi over two line. But how do we control which direction it is? So the sine of B actually controls what direction it is, okay? So we'll make a little table here. We'll take the value of B to be either positive or negative, and we'll, um, actually I'm gonna make this too small, but let's, let's draw this a little bigger. Um, We'll do it here. So we could have positive b, we could have negative b, and we can have cosine or we can have sine. Okay. Wow, my lines are crooked. Okay, so if we have a positive b and we have a cosine, I'm gonna shrink my stroke here, um, then your your limousine is gonna be to the right of the theta equals pi over two line. So these are all positive limousons, okay? Um, if we have sine in positive B, it's going to be above the polar axis. And then the opposite if it's negative. If it's negative, you're gonna have it to the left of theta equals pi over two. So these would be flips, so we'd have, uh, you know, my, my cardioid, instead of being like that, my cardioid would be like that, okay? Uh, and if it's a sign, then it's gonna be below the polar axis. Um, so if you wanna know where the dimple is gonna be, right, the flat side, the dimple, the cardioid, or whatever, um, that's always gonna be kind of on the opposite side. So if I want, if I have a positive B, then that means my dimple is gonna be over, you know, I mean, technically it's out the pole if it's a cardioid, but it's going to be coming, you know, your lines are going to come out from the left. Um, or just, you know, the majority of the limason for these ones, at least, is going to be over to the positive. Okay? So that's how you can graph limasons. And these ratios are useful to know to identify what kind of limason it's going to be, because we are going to be doing intersections of limasons. And it's going to be important to know, um, based on which limason it is, uh, how many points of intersection that you expect. Okay? So tune in next time for more on intersections of Lumison.